Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And I recently had a patient who came out of a ketamine infusion session for PTSD who looked at me and said, Doc, I thanked my Ativan for what it helped me go through at a time that I was struggling. I acknowledged the harms it's caused and I said goodbye to it. In the last three months, that patient has not touched their Ativan going from once a day to none a day. What is trauma? How does ketamine, like other psychedelics, help us increase our self-efficacy and tap into our inner healing potential to overcome trauma? We'll talk about what physical and psychological trauma is and how ketamine, like other psychedelics, can help increase our inner healing potential to overcome those traumas, hopefully with fewer medications than before. And we'll specifically talk about the traumas of childbirth and surgery as examples of just how much power we have over guiding our healing potentials. Medicine's greatest secret is our inner healing potential, and it's most powerful under anesthesia when we let go of the reality we think we know. The first thing that all patients need to appreciate is that our body is constantly trying to heal itself. In the Western biomedical model, we call this homeostasis. It's like a gyroscope that's spinning, and when insults come our way, physical or psychological insults like traumas, that gyroscope gets pushed off of its axis. Eventually, it tries to bring its way back to its axis if it has the right inner healing and it has the right support coming from the outside world. It's a balance of the two, typically. The longer it takes for that gyroscope to return back to its axis, the greater the chance of maladaptive behaviors or disease processes coming up. So for example, after surgery, a giant physical insult and psychological insult to the body, the gyroscope gets turned over. The longer it takes to recover, the greater the risk of things like chronic pain, PTSD, depression, or worse anxiety leading up to future surgery. After childbirth, something the body has slowly been adapting to for eight, nine months, the sudden change in hormones after delivery, whether surgical or natural childbirth, the fluid shifts, the blood loss, all contribute to that gyroscope being pushed off its axis as well. And we know the risks of baby blues or postpartum depression or anxiety are quite high, perhaps as high as one in five or 20% of mothers after delivery. There are many other traumas that can also throw our gyroscope off of its axis, things like losing a loved one, abuse as a child. Once again, without the appropriate inner healing potential, things like nutrition, mindset, comorbid conditions, and without external support from loved ones to help us cope, we risk bad things happening as the gyroscope tries to correct itself. Things like depression or anxiety in the case of losses of loved ones or abuse or PTSD, or in an end case, suicide. What do psychedelics and ketamine have to do with our gyroscope? Some of the hallmarks of all psychedelic experiences include expansive consciousness, appreciating gratitude and forgiveness, and in some cases, if they go to a very profound level, ego separation or ego dissolution. All of these contribute to persistent changes in self-representation, which is a fancy way of saying that we change our relationship with ourselves, in most cases to gain more cognitive flexibility. And the greater the cognitive flexibility, the greater our gyroscope is able to weather storms and not fall over and stay stuck. As the old saying goes, the willow reed is able to weather the storm because it's flexible enough to sway back and forth against the high winds but the mighty oak tree snaps in the storm. It's a beautiful image for that gyroscope that might snap or fall over permanently if it's too rigid and can't sway back and forth with the inevitable insults that life might throw its way. And that is the power of medically supervised psychedelic therapies where we help instill that self-efficacy and that cognitive flexibility where their homeostasis can be augmented and they can better appreciate how powerful their inner healing potential is. How many of my patients come to me saying that they're stuck in their depression or their anxiety or their PTSD? That gyroscope is simply not able to restore its balance and right itself. Combination of inner and outer forces certainly, and also often a consequence of rigid habit 
loops. I'm not blaming any patients, but the reality is that the greater our cognitive flexibility, oftentimes, not always, the greater the ability for our gyroscope to more quickly write itself and not allow for maladaptive behaviors to enter our body and mind. We often use words like resilience or grit or patience to characterize how a cognitively flexible mindset is able to weather the storm that knocks a gyroscope down in the first place. Once again, whether from surgery, childbirth, traumas, deaths, there are so many. A physical example is in our heart or in our brain if we have a blockage of a blood vessel that leads to potentially a heart attack or a stroke. The gyroscope gets knocked over when blood flow is compromised to the heart muscle or to the brain tissue. The faster we're able to restore blood flow, like if it's just a couple of minutes, that gyroscope can right itself without long-term damage. However, if the blood flow is blocked for too long and that gyroscope is knocked too far off of its axis, it might never be able to recover. And that leads to things like scar in the heart leading to a heart attack or to strokes where the brain tissue is dead and can never recover. That resilience, grit, and patience are instrumental when we try to dive into the concepts of gratitude or forgiveness to overcome past traumas, whether they were physical or psychological. And we can also use that same resilience and grit to foster curiosity, which is one of our body's natural antidotes to so many physical and mental health conditions. By changing our relationship with ourselves, by rewiring the brain's interpretation of pain signals, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain, there is tremendous potential to foster resilience and forgiveness and gratitude to help us heal from traumas of the past, emotional or physical once again. These need to be done in medically supervised therapeutic environments, often with the help of a therapist or a psychologist to help integrate the experience. The drug on its own typically is not as powerful as having the whole care team involved in guiding a patient through this healing process. The hope is that with that self-efficacy, medications won't be as relied upon in the future. If they are still needed, that's okay. But if we can tap into more natural healing places, that's always preferable for my patients.